Okay, what we're going to do today is take a look at one of these Windowsy clones for Linux called. L well, I'm a bit confused about the naming actually. So it says Windows FX on the installer there, and then if you go and type in Linux FX into Google, go away. It will sort of direct you to their website, which has got the domain of Windows FX. So we're going to we're going to refer to it as Windows FX throughout this video, but it, it is also known as Linux FX. So what I'm going to do is just install it and sort of have a look around and then I'm going to sort of give my opinion on what I feel about Windows Linuxy clones towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead and install. So what have we got here? Oh, I must say, I think it's um, based in Brazil. Let me just open up their website a moment. And it's based on Ubuntu and uses Cinnamon as its desktop environment. Um, I'm pretty sure it's based in Brazil. I'll tell you what, let's jump onto the distro watch page. Um, yeah, there we go. It is a Brazilian Linux distribution based on Ubuntu. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and install it now. So we're going to go for English. Warning, now the system is in English, but the Windows FX installer automatically detects the language over the internet. Okay, that's not to worry. Right, let's go and install. I'll talk about the overall setup and stuff once we've got through the installation process. So it appears to be using Calamares as its installer. It is indeed, which is version 3.2.20. And again, there it says for Windows FX. So I think that's probably the name they're going to go for. So let's go to continue. And there you go, you get like a pink Windows logo there. Let's go for British English. And click next. Europe, London, UK. Right, we're going to go for a straight erase disk and we're going to do it on this Drevo because I think there's nothing on there. At least I hope there isn't. Okay, it's taking a little while to scan these storage devices. There we go, so there's nothing on it. And what it's going to do is create one EFI partition for our boot and then one root partition Windows FX. So it's not creating a swap partition and it doesn't actually give us the option to unless we go into the manual but I'm not going to manually install this one today I'm not too bothered about it so we're going to go for next and we're going to do our user accounts um, Windows Fakey there we go and we're going to log in automatically without a password yep that's all good install now so we're going to make a note of the time so it's 10:38. okay that's all installed now and it's 10:41. so a little bit over three minutes it took to install so we're going to reboot now and boot off disk i'll quickly show you you even get a little windows logo here and ask you to remove the usb right we're just booting up now it shouldn't take too long there we go we get another windows logo there in the loading screen And we should be planted at the desktop now. Okay, there's some weird Cortana thing. Let me just mirror the displays. <laughs> right, let's turn fake Cortana down. Okay, so straight away we get a fake Cortana with a quite a funny sort of robotic -y voice. So we're going to do what it says. So first we should do is check for drivers and updates. Let's do that. So that's just going to open up the software and updates for Ubuntu. It's going to search for additional drivers. And find nothing. Um, yep, yeah, resolution's fine. Install this procedure install Centralina VMS and Centralina client on your desktop. Do you wish to continue? I don't know what that is, but we're going to go for it. Oh, this version of Windows S FX does not have an embedded Sentry VMS. Please download the XWS version to use. Okay, I'm not too worried about that anyway, to be honest. Um, so this is called Helloa or Loa, their version of Cortana. So we're going to start using Windows FX now. So as you can see, it's using a Windows wallpaper. We've got some shortcuts on our desktop to the left, and then we've got a panel to the bottom, which will be just the standard cinnamon panel. So what we're going to do is have a look. So we've got a power button. We have a shh. That's just telling us what workspace we're on, apparently. We have a power button, which again is made to mimic the sort of look of Windows. We then have our sound, which again looks quite Windowsy. 
Then we have our network icon there, and if we click that, it just has a wire, then we can go into the network settings. We then have a weather widget, and then we have a system monitor here, which again is made to look a bit like the task manager that you'd find on Windows 10. And then we have some quick launch icons here, which are Chrome, files, and software. We then have this button here, which is meant to be the multitasking view, but it appears to just open the workspace switcher. And then we have our application launcher. So to the left, we have some quick launch icons here. We have one for power, one for logout, one for lock screen, one for the terminal, which will just be a standard terminal by the looks of things. And then we have a files and system settings. So let's have a look at how the system settings has been made to look. So here's the system settings, and while we're in here, let's have a look at what they've done for the theming. So again, it's all using quite Windowsy style icons, and for the most part, I think they look pretty much what you'd expect. Right, let's go on to themes, and here is the theming. So this is the first time I've seen Linux FX as opposed to Windows FX in the branding on this distro. So let's have a look at how this is all set up. So it does have a dark. Let's try the dark out. Um, icons wise it has just the one package for the icons which is Linux FX and then the rest of sort of Linux icons you've got Kimo Light there as well so we're going to leave that on Linux FX let's go into controls and change that to the dark theme that they have and then we'll go on here so we have one theme and one dark theme so what are we on at the moment we're on dark so let's go on the normal one there you go so you get a bit of a lighter application launcher and taskbar at the bottom there so let's just see what that looks like with light controls as well. So let's go on to Linux FX and change that back to light. And now let's open up our files manager. And there you go, it does look very Windowsy, doesn't it? Even these icons here. So this looks to be Nemo. Yes, it is indeed. So it's Nemo version 4.4.2. And again, made to look very much like Windows in the theming. So let's now go on to their dark theme and see how that all looks together. Has its own mouse as well, Windows 10, Linux FX 10 mouse. Icons are the same, let's change the controls to the dark theme and we'll change that to the dark theme as well. Okay, cool. So what applications does this thing come with? So the store will just be Ubuntu Store or soft, um, GNOME Software. Yep, so it's GNOME Software and then they've just given it a sort of a Windows Store kind of icon. And let's see if it has snaps out of the box. It does, but there are none installed. And what about Flatpak? It appears to have Flatpak installed as well. Yep, so Flatpak and Snaps are already enabled out of the box. Let's get out of this one for now. So let's go into the application launcher and let's start with accessories. So we get Etcher, Backups, which is probably Deja Dup. It is indeed. We have the calculator. See what the calculator looks like. Does that look like a Windowsy kind of calculator? I'm not too sure. Okay, let's keep it moving. We've checked out files, we have help. So we have mouse pad here, which does look quite Windowsy. Let's go on to the light theme and see how that looks as well. Let's go back into the theming. And then we're gonna change that back to, we'll leave that on dark. There you go, so that does look a lot like the notepad of which you'd find on Windows, but it is just, Mousepad, which is sort of the one you'll find in a lot of XFCE desktops. Okay, let's keep moving. So we have Plank as well. It's got an install of Plank, which is a dock. And I don't know if you, any of you guys have used Windows like back in the day. There used to be a program called Rocket Dock, which was like a way to get like a little dock on your Windows. And that, as far as I can tell, is the icon that that program used to use. But it is just Plank on here. Okay, we have another entry for text editor. Okay, so this one looks to me to be get it. Let's just double check that. It is indeed. So it has two text editors, one of mousepad and then another of gedit, get it 3.36.2. Is there anything else in here we want to take a look at? Uh, also comes installed with wine tricks. So you can install your Windowsy kind of programs in here out of the box. In games, we have an Xbox logo there for the games icon and it has Steam pre-installed. For graphics, we have a few things. We have GIMP, we have Inkscape, we have Image Magic, Document Scanner. Let's open up GIMP. It will be version 2.10.18. Okay, no real custom theming on here, really. Let's go on to About just to confirm that that is the version I thought it was. Yep, 2.10.18. 
okay that's graphics let's go on to internet now so we have two web browsers we have firefox google chrome let's open up firefox and see how that looks with their theming yeah that looks pretty much like a windows program to me let's close those tabs now and let's keep going so that was internet so we also have google chrome we have microsoft teams preview so i don't actually use teams but i know that they've now made a package for linux i do believe so there you go you can have your microsoft teams there let's close those windows and let's keep moving so we also have transmission and skype installed out of the box so in office now we have the full LibreOffice suite which again all have the um microsoft office branding let's open up LibreOffice writer and see how they've set that up okay so i can see that they've put it in the ribbon layout again to look a bit like microsoft word and it doesn't do too bad of a job there to be honest with you let's keep going so is there anything else in office ah evolution I wonder if it has Evolution EWS installed out of the box because I think it should if it's going for the whole Windows thing. Let's have a look. No, it doesn't. So I'm quite surprised about that actually. I thought it would have included Evolution EWS because it is one of the best ways to get access to your Office 365 calendar memos, tasks, etc. through Evolution. Okay, we won't worry about that. So that's all you get in Office and you also get a document viewer. In sound and video now you have Kodi for those Kodi users out there. You have Simple Screen Recorder and VLC Media Player. Let's open that up and see how that looks. Pretty standard. Um, where were we? Sound and video, so there's nothing else in there. So in administration, ah, it comes installed with HTOP out of the box. Let's open up HTOP and see how much RAM we've managed to use so far. So we're using 1.2 gig. There is no swap, so it didn't create a swap file either let's keep going so that was in administration so it has gparted as well to manage all disks and partitions midnight commander which is a terminal based file manager let's keep going power statistics what's this then okay so it's not really giving us too much information here for power statistics we have software which again is just gnome software software updater which will open up just the software updater or live patch or whatever it's called checking for updates and it's found some so we're gonna let that do that so that's going to install some updates for us and then we also have startup disk creator which will let you sort of create a us like a usb image or disk i'm going to imagine yeah cd drive there okay you can use live patch blah 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 so yep that is just live patch let's keep moving we have synaptic package manager which is a gui to manage packages for ubuntu and again it's got a windowsy kind of icon for it although that looks like a windows 7 sort of icon so we have system monitor and we have terminal and user groups right let's um i'll tell you what let me go into the startup applications and just make sure there's not too much that's going to bog us down when I reboot to get a RAM reading. Right, so it's got Microsoft Teams starting up automatically. We will not want that. This computer doesn't have Bluetooth, so I'm just going to turn that off. So there's the Aloha Assistant. Hello. I'm probably butchering that, so sorry, guys, if you're watching. Not, not too impressed at how I'm pronouncing that. Uh, Cinnamon Settings Daemon for XR and R license so a windows fx license okay ssh key agent and print q applet right what we're going to do is do a quick reboot and see how much ram we're using before that actually let's see what the windows sort of splitting snapping is set up to do right so we have a four-way split so let's open up some programs let's open up both of the text editors side by side and we can see which one looks more like notepad i'm going to imagine it will be I do believe we have crashed. We have crashed. Okay, I'm going to do a reboot now um, and we'll pick up where we left off. So let me just pause this recording. Okay, we're just booting back up now. Hopefully it um, didn't crash before it set the uh, startup applications because then we can get a RAM reading at boot to see what it's like. We disable Bluetooth and Microsoft Teams. Oh no, not this fake Cortana thing again. Okay, close. Right, let's check out HTOP. So by default, it's using 765 megabytes of RAM. That's not too bad, to be honest with you. I thought it might be a bit higher. 
So I want to see how the split does work. So and I wanted to compare both text editors together to see which one looks more like Notepad, but I'm going to imagine it will be Mousepad because Gedit has a few more sort of gnomesy cool controls at the top there. Let's open up Mousepad. Get in there. And let's open up one more thing. Let's open up the Files Manager, which is Nemo, like we just mentioned. And there you go. So there's your four-way split. Let's jump into a different desktop so that all works. Let's run an update in the terminal and at the same time check out what repos it's using. Right, so we've got the Google Chrome repo for our Google Chrome package. We have the Skype repo for the Skype. We have Microsoft repo for VS Code, okay. And we have Ubuntu Focal Fossil repos, 20.04. And we have the uh, Microsoft Teams repo. And then we have the Etcher repos. Okay, cool. Right, before we give our opinion, let's see if there's any different Windowsy kind of wallpapers. There is, there's a dark Windows like that. And I just saw which I think we're going to use for the thumbnail of this video. One with little Tux Penguin peeking through the Windows window. Right, okay, cool. I think that's, for the most part, all I really want to look at. Let's, um, I'll tell you what, let me open up Plank. Let me just move this panel to the top and see what it looks like with the Plank package open. So let's go to Move and just chuck it up there for a minute. Right, let's open up Plank. There you go. So that's, has it got any custom themes or is it pretty much just the default theming no no custom themes there okay let's close plank and then move that back down to the bottom and just give our general opinion of windows fx slash linux fx and these sort of windows linux clones in general so I'm not a massive fan of them. I probably wouldn't ever suggest a new, if like a new user came to me and said, look, I've been using Windows forever, but I want to start using Linux, I wouldn't suggest them this. Because obviously there's quite a few key differences in how Linux looks, feels and operates. And I think if you're going to chuck them with one of these, you'll sort of bring them into a full sense of security. And then when they get a bit more comfortable and want to venture outside the confines of these Windows clones, they might find it a bit harder than they would had they have just started using a standard Linux desktop distro like you know Ubuntu or something like that. However, if it gets people using it, then I'm all for it. Like using Linux as a sort of a whole, then that's fine. But for me, I wouldn't recommend this to a new user. If you're an advanced user and you just want to have a Windows clone, then you know go for it but then you'd probably just theme your own distro and be done with it to be honest with you but that's windows fx slash linux fx 10 thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye bye